Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and today we are solving this circuit using a couple different methods. In particular, we are solving for the power dissipated in that resistor. And we're going to use two different methods. We're going to use mesh current analysis, and we're going to use source transformations. So first we'll do mesh current. Um, the object in mesh current is to solve for your loop currents in every closed loop in the circuit. All right, so we can step back and look at the circuit and see a couple things that'll simplify it for us. First of all, you see in between these two points, the only thing that exists is a current source in parallel with a resistor. If we take this current source and put it out here and move the resistor in here, it's equivalent, same thing, and that'll make our job a lot easier. So, we'll go. All right, now we can do the same thing in between these two points. All there is is a current source and a resistor in parallel. We're just going to flip their positions. All right, now, since these current sources are now by, their se by themselves on the outside of loops, we know the values of these two loop currents. This one's going to be 5 amps, this one's going to be 15 amps. Now, that only leaves us one unknown. We'll call it I1. And one more further thing we can do to simplify our job is to see that this resistor here is by itself in parallel with a voltage source. And when you have that, this resistor adds nothing to the overall behavior of the circuit. It just absorbs power. And the power it absorbs is supplied by that source. So unless your question is specifically about this resistor, you can just pretend that it's not here. All right, so here's our circuit. And we're going to write an equation to solve for I1. All right, in mesh analysis, we use KVL, which states that the sum the sum of all the voltage drops around any closed loop is equal to 0 so we will use that principle to solve for this loop current in here so we'll find the, the sum of the voltage drops around this loop and sum them to zero. So starting with the 15 ohm resistor, the voltage drop across that is going to be 15 times I1. The next voltage drop across this is going to be 8 times I1 minus this loop current, which is 5 amps. The voltage drop across this resistor is going to be 2 ohms times I1 minus this loop current, which is 15 amps. And finally, the voltage drop across this is actually a voltage rise. It's going to be negative because it's a voltage rise of 30 volts. So we're going to say minus. 30 is equal to 0. Now, we're going to rearrange this and solve it. The only unknown in this equation is I1, and that will give us the value of that loop current. So, let's see what we got here.
So we have 25 I1 is equal to 100 volts. Now, to get I1, we simply go 100 over 25, I1 is equal to 4 amps. Now, we know the value of every current, every loop current. So, when we're looking for the power absorbed by this resistor, we know power is equal to current times voltage. And power is also equal to current squared times resistance. So, since we know the value of this loop current, it's 4 amps flowing around. That's the current going through this resistor. And power in the 15 ohm resistor is equal to 4 amps squared times 15, which is equal to 240. 240 watts. There's your answer.